thank you architect Amanizam for your introduction is like enlightened for us for this morning journey yeah I'm waiting for that to uh to be set up to be set up <laughs> so I'm not I'm not just to to, to, to promote this but I think all the architects have to journey in architecture but I'm personally for it three books then we donated to resource center the resource center project so we will uh, give a round of applause to Dato Architect Hadida Abdulmadi I, I have a word Mr. Rahman Rahim Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and good morning to, to all of you who have, who have brief this Saturday morning in spite of the COVID in, uh, conditions and things like that. And I think I must congratulate you guys for being brave enough to come. And I, I assume and I take it that all of us have had our booster doses and I think we are more re resistant than the others perhaps, you know. So uh, I pray that and do on that none of us will be involved in this uh, COVID. Although I have known friends who have been and and even lost friends. So we are very fortunate today to be to get together here to do this uh, conversation. Um, as mentioned by Adrianta and Ahmad Nizam, I think they've given you enough insight to, to who I am or to what I am, you know. So uh, there are a lot of things, as uh, Ahmad Nizam mentioned just now, a lot of things I, I couldn't disclose to the staff that I had uh, when managing them, that's the word. Uh, I'm not trying to be emotional about it, but you know, looking back, sometimes a lot of our actions and the things we say, uh, it's not meant to, to disrupt, but to construct. So uh, that's the spirit that I had. And I believe I had that right through my entire life. And, and it's just to fight the battle every day. You know, you get up in the morning, of course we have our other obligations and things like that, and then move on. And meet as many people as possible, have as much experience as possible, and things like that. So today, I am again privileged, and as uh, Adrianta mentioned, uh, I am the first speaker ever or author to have this conversation under the PAM Resource Center. And it's a, a, a far cry from the struggle we had at the, uh, Jalan Tangsi, as evident by, by uh, Ahmad Nizam just now, uh, in his testimony that he, he, he was out of job. There was no job. When I came into office uh, as PAM president, we were at our worst, there was no uh, employment available for graduates on this $600 program. The government departments, for example, uh, JKR, uh, are not offering any more jobs. And, and that is, was when I had the privilege of meeting up with the chief executive of the country then, uh, <laughs> Dr. Made, who was the Prime Minister. So uh, I got to talking to him to tell him that, you know, which is worse, unemployment or unemployed graduates? And based on that simple argument, he says, of course, uh, unemployed graduates will be more dangerous, but the vote is still won, you know? So I said, look, let's not train these people and just throw them in the, the open market without guiding them. 
So let's really, oh, I see Victor. Thanks, Victor. My fellow Victorian, ah, he was my testimony, no? my witness through the, my journey in school. Anyway, it, it's incredible that after Lillian, thank you very much for coming. Uh, now, where was I? You see, this is talking with an old man. Ah, uh, there, Tun Mahade, yeah. He was the prime minister and I had to, to present that case because we were getting lots of complaints from architectural graduates coming from overseas with no, no employment, no prospect of training uh, uh, as uh, uh, what you call uh, training architects in uh, the government as well as in the private sector. So uh, I gave him a draft of his speech for the PAM annual dinner at the Hilton DPJ uh, when I took over office from Ken Young as president. And he said he will let me have the, 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 the speech uh, later in the afternoon, but I did not get it until at the dinner. So I inquired why, why didn't I get that copy of your speech? You know, I wanted it to tally with my speech. And he said, never mind, you will hear about it. And the good news then was he abolished the compulsory requirement to serve government uh, during that bad period. And it was the, the headline the next day that government has, it was in the Straits Times, Sunday Times, uh, that government uh, allowed uh, graduates not to necessarily serve the government, but to be in the private sector and also seek their own employment. So that's the kind of uh, uh, my version of my baptism of fire, as much as I, I, I share the same strategy in the office. And that's how I did for the, the confession. So that's why we, we were quite fortunate in the sense, I have mentioned this to Lisa, that once upon a time, the architecture profession was the lead consultant in the building industry. We not only led the other consultants, i.e. the engineers who outnumbered us, uh, the QS who came under us, the planners who were under us, uh, then, uh, and the builders were under us, in the sense. The Master Builders Association became very close to us, and I, I met people like Yo Tiong Le and, and, and Mr. Xia. Xia. They, they were representing the Master Builders. Now we saw the synergy that there is a common bond within the building industry that the professionals should be working together in the common interest of building our country. And this is something that Maybe because of the, the time uh, line that I have exposed myself to, that I can see the difference between what it was before and what it is today. And uh, I just got some information. In 1969, there were about, uh, uh, no, no, uh, 59. There were about uh, 17 or 18 architects. And much earlier, it was only seven architects, 37 architects. So I think this came out of the archive in the statistics, you know. Anyway, and at that time, there were only uh, about uh, less than 100 architects, you not know, during my time. And we were struggling and we were supposed to serve the country and, and do as much work as we can. And uh, anyway, I, I'll come back to that. Uh, later, this is just to acknowledge the introduction given by my predecessors just now, uh, so that I can, I, I don't want to say too much about 
about uh, the book. Maybe you might enjoy reading the book. It doesn't matter to me. It's already done. So I, I'm not looking for, for accolades or credit, but I'm just sharing because I went through it and I thought you should understand, uh, uh, share that because there are times, you know, you want to give up, but you don't. You never give up. You never give up on life. Anyway, so, okay, I think I, I will start off by just uh, making a quick reference uh, to this, yeah? Because you can read about this. So I said, my, the idea of <clears throat> documenting this has been there for a long time. You know, when, when I turned 60 <clears throat> in 2005, I thought, well, that's the time to, to start writing and reflecting on the life journey. But uh, again, I had clients who came to me and said, hey, after 60 years, this is when you're, you're most useful. You know, we can tap your experiences. And I, I was getting more jobs when I was older. Then, then when I was younger, I was struggling, you know. I, 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 I spent all my savings when I started my practice and it was only 8,000, you know. We had to buy drawing boards, we had to buy T-squares, set squares, which your generation don't know. You can come and visit my office to see the museum, maybe. <laughs> One day we will have that set squares and, uh, you know, also parabola. Uh, French curves. Huh? French curves. French curves. French curves. Yes, opposed to uh, Italian curves. You know? Yes. They don't know what? French? Must be a. Yeah, French fries they know, but not French curves. Anyway, I still have those. You know? Yes. yes. So that's the kind of uh, experience I wanted to do. So I, then every time I met, the chief executive, the prime minister. Bila lagi punya buku nak siap? So I said, I'm working on it. He said, berapa lama nak work on book? So I said, I'm busy, you know, not like you. You are prime minister, not as busy as me. <laughs> yeah. So finally, I did finish it after 15 years. And thanks to the MCO, you know, you, the MCO really did something for me and I am sure it did a lot for every one of us in this room because we reset before anybody before the government suggests to you you go on your own to reset so among the reset I had was I said uh, here's the chance to finish the book this old man has been asking Bila lagi, Bila lagi, you know Bila lagi, but no time so I wanted to publish it and I said, uh, traditionally, you find a publisher. So I went to University Press, University Malaya, because I thought they were good. Uh, and once upon a time, they were my clients, so I thought they would be a good help. But they said, no, to publish, you have to have a committee, editorial committee who will vet your the contents and advise you, because they don't want to be sued for contents and things like that. So. I said, okay, good. And how long will that take? Oh, maybe three weeks, four weeks, you know, uh, six weeks. So it's, there's no time. And it's in Skalam Susana, Kajian, Jumpa. I said, okay, thank you very much. Then finally, uh, Hanafi here, who is with me in the office, I think in excess of four years or three years. Uh, so we, we said, look, let's just do it. So what do, how do we go about it? So we got to go to our ISBN for a registration. And I, in fact, I did consult Azim, architect Atsa. Azim, I said, Azim, but the manner you publish that book on, on Napoleon, I'll just go to, um, and it was published by Atsa. So I said, well, if Atsa can publish, so can Hajida and Associate. So we registered. And the registration was free. Well, then you don't have to pay anything to ISBN. 
once they have approved, you are only obliged to send five copies, five copies of your publication to them for their record. So that if anybody sues you, they have uh, evidence there. Anyway, that's how it was. So like I said, it was done in various bits and pieces. So the uh, MCO gave me the opportunity in April and for five months, I just sat in the office and in the house and at every time, at every occasion, I, if I'm free, I will text the paragraphs and <laughs> the chapters in my phone and forward it to the office and then get it printed and read through. Sometimes I, I, I have to declare it. Sometimes I, I, I send it to my daughter, for example, as if I'm telling her the story. And then I get it printed, you know, because you have to work with the, the current technology. And uh, so fortunately, the papers that I have prepared from as early as 74, I prepared, the first paper I prepared in Malaysia was the need for conservation of our heritage, you know. So I wrote two papers, it's in two parts. And they were published in the Magella Architect in 1975, 74, uh, 75 and 76, the two parts. And uh, I was uh, commenting on our Antiquity Act, which did not cover buildings, you know, and buildings were slowly destroyed. I had to sometimes, sorry, I sometimes appeal personally to owners, including Chan Sao Lai, you know, Tan Sri Chan Sao Lai, because they wanted to pull down that old house, the Chan mansion of the same code though, you know, and, and Salai has to explain this why I have, I have a relationship with Chan Salai simply because he's an architect, a Kumbulan architect, uh, Kumbulan architect, yeah, Hisham's office. This is harsh. I, I, I support and agree with you, but the family wants to monetize the property they inherited. So they had this Maya hotel built. So, so this is the kind of thing, a lot of personal things. And this is the thing that I don't disclose or share with my staff. No, I carry them, as I mentioned to you just now. I was multitasking, you know, all sorts of things. Quite apart from PAM and the office, I had to do, I was on City Hall advisory board doing all sorts of other things. And I had the trust of the then chief executive, the prime minister, who, who felt that I'll go talk to Ajida. He will do, he knows. Elias talked to Ajida. Or Elias, have you spoken to Ajida about this or things like that? So this is why not how many of you knew that orchid, the orchid uh, park garden in the garden was my brainchild. The bird park was my brain. You know, and nobody cares. We just move on. You know, conservation was my my, my baby in the sense. So this is why I will I will try. Let, let me just finish this thing. <laughs> oh dear. So then you may have to stay here all night. <laughs> so the intention is to write uh, up an here. So. Uh, Initially, it was uh, half big and diverse. And then again, when it was completed, I had this advisory constraint. You know, people were telling me, some friends of mine who saw the draft, he said, hey, you better be careful about this. They can sue you and they can stop the sale of your book and the publication. So, in, in a way, just reflecting on that, that aspect of it, I had to censor various sections of the book and not disclose uh, that unless people want. Some have come back to me to say, in this paragraph, you, you spoke about this. Can you elaborate? So I said, sure, I can. You know, it's for your private, you know, because 
sometimes, say for example, the investigation papers on Highland Tower. It's not made public yet. I've not seen it. And I was there. Uh, Dr. Gui was there. Dr. Judin was there with me. We were the investigators. Why not talk to us? Nobody wants. So this is where I only dismiss them as never learn lessons or disasters. You know, that's the best I can say. And this is, and there are other inc in incidents. So those are advisory constraints. So Alhamdulillah, uh, this VI boy finished his book. So far, I've got no legal suit. The other VI boy, Tommy Thomas, who published his book after me, got lost. <laughs> and he's going to hell. There's no point. And